Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Brittany. Today I want to share with you guys how my husband and I remodeled our kitchen for under $500. We used lacquer and a spray gun as well. I want to show you guys the process, give you guys all the steps as well as some tips and tricks. So yeah, let's get started. Alright guys, so this is the before of our kitchen. We have a black lacquer that's on the cabinets. We got these done about seven years ago by a company and we spent about $1,300. For the kitchen and the bathrooms and we also wanted to get them done again but we called a couple companies and they were going to charge us about $1,800 and so we didn't want to spend that much money. We also got our countertops done earlier in the year and so we did not want to spend another $1,800 so my husband had some time and he was like let's do our cabinets so I'm all about that DIY life so I'm like yes. So here are all the chips on our cabinets. You can see it really needed some help. And we also got our countertops done and added this farmhouse sink. And so we had to modify the cabinets. So you can see that they spray painted the cabinets just so they can fit in that area. So it was just about time that we needed to do our cabinets. Also, the crown molding was put in when we got our cabinets done the last time, but you can tell they didn't sand the crown molding before spraying it, so that's why it's peeling like that. So I feel like it's good when you do your cabinets yourself because then you can make sure you're taking all those proper steps. And if you do get your cabinets done by someone else, just make sure you're asking questions, make sure they're doing a primer, make sure they sand because all those steps are important to make sure it lasts long because ours did not last. So first things first, we went ahead and went and picked up our supplies. This is everything that we bought at Home Depot. Besides the paint, we found a Sherwin-Williams in our area that carries the lacquer paint as well as the primer. And so this is what we ended up picking up so far. We did run out of supplies and had to go back to the store a few times. But I feel like that always happens. Okay, so using scotch tape and a marker, we went ahead and labeled all of our doors in the kitchen and then we also added all the hinges in baggies and labeled those as well. This is going to help keep everything nice and organized. And now this is how the kitchen looks with all the doors off of the hinges and my cabinets look really unorganized. That's because they are. I'm waiting to do a video for you guys. Um, let me know if you guys want to see that down below. I want to organize everything in the cabinets in the kitchen. And then I also have a video for my pantry if you guys want to see that one. I'll go ahead and link it down below. Alright, so next step I'm going to go ahead and clean all of the cabinets and cabinet doors with TSP. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and tape up some plastic just so none of that TSP falls on the countertops. So I measured out the sponge and then I cut it to the correct size. I figured the sponge holds a lot of water and I didn't want a lot of that water dripping everywhere. So the smaller the sponge, the better and it's easier to control. So now I'm just measuring the TSP according to instructions and then I'm going to get started on cleaning the cabinets. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the product with the sponge and then I'm going to use a rag to scrub the cabinets so it removes any dirt or grease. And then I come in with clean water and a clean rag and clean off all the products from the cabinets. Next, I'm repeating the same steps on the cabinet doors outside.
So while I'm cleaning the doors, Edgar is going to go ahead and sand the doors that are dried. So he's using an electric sander and he has 180 grit attached to it. And then he also has a sponge that is 180 grit for all of the areas that he can't get with the sander. So we spoke with people at Sherwin-Williams and we also spoke with people at Home Depot and they told us that we do not need to remove the color fully. So we're just scuffing up the cabinets so that the primer can adhere to it. While Edgar finishes up outside with the doors, I just went ahead and prepped everything in the kitchen so we can go ahead and sand in here as well. And just a quick tip, before closing everything up in your kitchen, make sure you take out any essential items you may need because this process did take us a couple days or so. So that helps out having everything you need just in case. After Edgar sanded everything down, we went ahead and cleaned all the cabinet doors with a damp microfiber towel. Now we are all prepped and ready for the grain filler. Alright guys, so now we're going to use this cabinet grain filler and that's going to give us a nice, clean and crisp look to our cabinets. This step did take us a long time, but it was really worth it in the end. Okay, so we went ahead and added two coats of this grain filler. So after the first coat, you're going to let it dry and then you're going to go ahead and sand with a 320 sandpaper just to get any of the imperfections out. And then you're also going to clean it off with a damp microfiber towel. And then after 30 to 60 minutes, you'll go ahead and add that second coat and repeat those same steps. And 24 hours later, you're able to start painting. So it was getting kind of late at night and we wanted to use a sander before the kids go to sleep so it doesn't wake them up in the middle of the night. So we came inside to sand everything down and then we also cleaned everything off with a damp microfiber towel. Now we are going to apply one coat of grain filler. Next step is sand everything down with a 320 grit and then clean it off with a damp microfiber towel. And we only did one coat of this because it's not going to be as noticeable as the doors. Now we are moving on to the second coat of the grain filler on all the cabinet doors. Mm -hmm. 
So we struggled a lot trying to figure out how we were going to hang the cabinet doors. So we attached hooks onto the cabinet doors and then used a hanger and we just needed somewhere to place everything so it can dry or even when we're spraying. So we thought we could hang a PVC pipe from our pergola and use that as a drying rack. But we ended up also using a canopy and that worked out even better so I'll show you guys that in a minute. And here is the second option for a drying rack. So we used a canopy that we borrowed from my dad and this worked out perfectly. Okay, so this grain filler has been drying all night. So now it's time to remove that second coat of any of the imperfections. It was hard to remove some of the grain filler in these cracks here. So I'm using a chiseler to go ahead and help remove that. And then going over it with a 320 sandpaper grit. And we just want to do a light sand just to make sure everything is nice and smooth. When we're all done prepping these cabinets, we're going to go ahead and remove all the dust with a damp microfiber towel. Okay, so the way we're going to hang these cabinet doors with the hanger is we're going to go ahead and drill two holes on each cabinet door. So you're going to want to put those holes a certain way. So if you have a cabinet door that's from the top, you're going to put the holes on the top. And if you have a cabinet door on the bottom, you're going to drill those holes on the bottom of the cabinet. So that way you're not able to see those holes when you're all done. But if you want to fill them in when you're done, you can add wood filler. That's what I did and just touched them up with paint afterwards. Okay, so now moving on inside the kitchen. So we went ahead and did a light sand with 320 grit sandpaper. Now we're gonna go ahead and clean everything off with the damp microfiber towel. We went ahead and moved the stove. So now I'm cleaning the cabinet area with the TSP. These are all sanded and clean. Now we just need to come back in with paper and we're ready to spray paint. Now we're finally ready to add all the paper back onto the cabinet. So the reason why we had it on then took it off is because when we were sanding, um, we didn't want all that sand to go into the cabinets where all of our dishes are. So I blocked it off with paper instead of removing everything out of the cabinets. And now we're gonna go ahead and put fresh paper on there just so we're eliminating all that extra dust that might've got on the paper. Because when we come in with a spray gun, we don't want to spray dust around while the paint is wet.
<laughs> the random crackers. Get married, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> Boom. All right, we got the counters protected so Almost. far. Almost. We need to block off all of that too. All of the top as well. This is what our kitchen looks like with all the prep work done. So now we're all ready to start spraying the cabinets. So I tried to do the same thing the people that did our cabinets before did. So they went ahead and added tape just to block everything off. But I guess they also added paper to cover everything up inside the drawer as well. And afterwards we did get spray on all of our stuff that was in the cabinets. And some of it washed off but then I told my husband and he was like yeah they actually also put paper over it and I was like why didn't you tell me and he was like oh I thought your idea was good too and I'm like really dude such a husband thing to do so just so you know put some paper over your items in your cabinet drawer just so none of it gets sprayed on as well so now moving on outside my husband built the spraying station right here with two ladders a piece of wood and secured the wood with some wire so this is going to be our area where we spray all the doors. And we're going to be using this compressor and a spray gun that our friends let us borrow and we appreciate it so much. Okay, so now it's finally time to start spraying. So we're going to be using the Sherwin-Williams Sherwood Vinyl Primer Surfacer. I'll go ahead and leave a link for that down below. Just a quick tip, make sure that you ask and make sure that your products do bond together so you don't have any issues. Also make sure that you do practice with the spray gun before starting on your cabinet doors. So Edgar never used a spray gun before so he was practicing on a piece of cardboard and it did take a few tries but we finally got it to work. Alright and this is just one coat here. We're going to go ahead and do all the cabinet doors with two coats of primer. In between coats we went ahead and did a light sand with the 320 grit sandpaper as well as wipe them down before spraying them again. Alright so now it's time to start spraying so we opened all the windows and doors as well as added a fan just to take out all the fumes from inside the house as well as we do not have the kids here with us because it's really toxic. Now Edgar is starting with the first coat of primer.
Okay, so this is the last section of the first coat. Now we're gonna let it dry for 15 minutes and then go ahead and come back with the 320 sandpaper and we're gonna do a light sand and then clean everything off with the microfiber towel. Now we are moving on to our second coat of primer. We have now completed our two coats of primer and in some areas we did three coats of primer depending on if it looked like it needed it. So this is how it's looking with two coats of primer. And now we're going to go ahead and do a light sand, clean it off again, and then move on to the top coat.
We have now light sanded everything, cleaned it off, and we are now ready for the top coat.
Okay, so we're finally done inside. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on to adding the hinges onto the cabinet doors. So putting the hinges in the baggie worked out perfectly because now we get to match up everything and then we get to install the hinges while hanging on the canopy. We even added all the handles onto the door while they were hanging and literally this made it so much easier and so much faster. I purchased these handles on Amazon and they were very affordable. They were like a 30 pack for $25 and I'll go ahead and leave a link down below if you want to check them out. Alright guys, and now it's time to clean up and put the kitchen back together. So we ended up using two cans of primer and one and a half cans of top coat. And you can clearly see right now that I have paint on my nose. How embarrassing. But it has been a long day. This was definitely a mission. And now you guys can see my taping skills. Edgar was really impressed. Dang. Look at that clean line. Dang! And look at the floor. Dang! Mm -hmm. Alright guys, I'm excited to show you. Remember, this is the before. Go ahead and give me a like if you're excited and oh my god, check it out. Alright guys, and that is how it turned out. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. I really love it. I'm so happy with it. I really like the white. I also loved how the grain filler worked. It came out really nice and I'm glad we took that extra step for the grain filler. It just looks so good. I'm so happy with it. The sink just stands out even more now. And yeah guys, let me know if you guys like this type of content. I also want to paint the cabinets in the bathrooms. Let me know if you guys would like to see that video. I'll go ahead and write down all the steps that we took for the cabinets and leave it in the description box so just in case you guys have to come back for anything you guys can find it quickly and then I'll also leave any links down below to anything that I can and go ahead and subscribe leave me a like and a comment down below and I'll see you guys next time bye
don't forget to subscribe.